That's Troy. Ben Lourdes, the big takeaway today was that there needs to be more coordination among agencies and Congress might need to get involved to change some laws. It's not just a Chicago problem either. Homicide records have been broken all over the country this year in red and blue states alike. And we tell ourselves we just can't do more because the public will isn't there. And the only thing I know for certain is that 100% of Americans don't want to get shot. As 2021 shapes up to be one of the worst years for deadly violence in the city's history, that is not normal. Other nations in this world do not see that level of murder. Today, Illinois lawmakers question federal agencies about what they're doing to help get a handle on gun crimes. We know the grim numbers in this city. Over 4,000 Chicagoans have been shot this year, 4,000. At the federal courthouse this morning, the U.S. attorney, the CDC, ATF, and the Chicago Police Department fielded pointed questions. This is not just about numbers. It's about real people, real lives. They told stories about how guns end up on Chicago streets, often from neighboring states, how a gun stolen from a licensed gun shop in Wisconsin got linked to 27 Chicago crimes. One gun store located across the state lines in Gary, Indiana, is responsible for the flow of hundreds, if not thousands, of illegal firearms. Today, Senator Durbin pushed the U.S. Attorney's Office on why there aren't more straw purchaser prosecutions, why the Indiana man who purchased the gun that killed Chicago police officer Ella French was able to simply walk out of court on an unsecure bond. That is more than a loophole. He also wanted to know why the Chicago ATF does so few field inspections of gun shops. Last year, Kansas City and Dallas each did more than 850 inspections. Chicago only did 86. Why the difference? The, those numbers don't necessarily encapsulate everything. He also wanted to know why so many untraceable ghost guns are turning up on Chicago streets. They have no serial numbers and are often purchased online and assembled at home. This year, Chicago police have confiscated 430 compared to last year's 130, including the one that recently killed 71-year-old Woom Sing Se in Chinatown. Yet, there is no federal law against gun trafficking. Federal sentencing guidelines must reflect the severity of the national gun violence problem. Senator Durbin says he intends to make straw purchasing an actual federal crime. And a lot of what they heard today, they say they will take back to Washington for action. We right. shall see. We should see. Okay, thank you. And Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox was not on hand for today's hearing on Chicago violence, but that did not stop a representative with the Heritage Foundation from taking a shot at her record. Heritage Foundation fellow Amy Swearer said that Fox and other prosecutors should be blamed for taking a, quote, hands-off approach to crime. Swearer was prepared to invoke one of Fox's cases that, quote, should infuriate everyone in the room, but Senator Dick Durbin stopped her short. Ms. Swear, I read your testimony, uh, and I believe in all fairness, since we did not invite the Cook County State's Attorney's Office to be represented here today, uh, that you shouldn't really zero in on any particular individual. Certain prosecutors can't be bothered to pursue criminal charges, and I think not just in one case, but in many cases where offenders are too often released on bail or prosecutions are refused on their behalf. In a statement, the state's attorney's office said Swearer's comments were, quote, purely for political posturing. The state's attorney says its office has approved charges on 86% of arrests this year in Chicago and Cook County.